Hello Scorpio and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from March 21st to March 28th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind. So we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle the busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Scorpio content is uploaded. Scorpio content comes out every single Tuesday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please feel free to check out the description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription level. Now, on the 21st, we have a Void of Course Moon happening at 11.58 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 12.01 p.m. we have the uh, moon entering into Aries. And at 1.23 it'll be a new moon in Aries. So Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Jupiter all in Aries. So you might feel excited. Energy might be booming. And you're going to want to focus on things that you can get started fast. On the 22nd. We have Ramadan beginning at sundown. We also have the wax and crescent moon in Aries conjunct Jupiter in Aries. Opportunities are waiting for you to find them or create them. Go get that hustle on. On the 23rd, we have a void of course moon happening at 1.13 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 2.42 p.m., that moon in its wax and crescent state enters into Taurus. But that is not the focus uh, energetically of the day. The big, big deal is that Pluto is going into Aquarius. It is indeed happening. That age of Aquarius that they keep talking about in all of those 60s songs and is the object of a lot of different movies during that time frame. It's a huge deal. Why? Because Pluto has not been in Aquarius in 1777 to 1797. It will be there for about 20 years in this rotation as well as it usually does in this particular sign. And nothing of historical importance at all happened during those times, right? Oh, wait. We formed a whole country in North America, didn't we? And then there was the French Revolution and of various other things. Historians will have field days here for you if you want to, there's a bunch of stuff to Google. Um, you will be passionate about the future. And you will, with that moon in Taurus, be seeking stability and security, but in a way that is calming and nurturing for everybody, because Tauruses are very much also focused on what is fair and wanting things to be fair to others. It's one of the uh, sweeter natures to the Taurus sign. On the 24th, you have the wax and crescent moon in Taurus is conjunct Uranus in Taurus. So change will still be the focus, but be smart about it and make those big changes now. See, and that is because Uranus is the planet of disruption and whereas for Taurus is very steadfast. So it's big changes. People you thought would never leave your side. If you've not been treating them right, off they go. Right, Tauruses uh, have a very, very long fuse, but it is attached to a powder keg at the end. So when they are fed up, they are fed up and stuff is getting and gonna go boom. So. On the 25th, you have a void, of course, moon happening at 12, 19 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 8.42 p.m., that waxing crescent moon is going to enter into Gemini. Uh, and we also have... Wow. Hold on a second here. Oh, Mars. Mars is changing uh, planets too. Mars is entering into Cancer. You will have a drive and focus that's home, uh, focused on home and hearth. Uh, Mars was in Gemini previously. Uh, and you're going to want to build things with a solid foundation. And with that moon being in uh, Gemini, you're going to want to communicate about it. <clears throat> on the 26th, you have the waxing crescent moon 
in Gemini, sextile sun in Aries. You are discovering that you are a adaptable. And this will make you feel a lot more at ease. It's going to calm the nerves. You're going to, the knowing that you can flex and pivot shows you that, you know, you can relax into this, uh, this new energy that's going to be happening here. Uh, on the 27th, uh, we have the waxing crescent moon in Gemini is square Neptune in Pisces. Focus may be difficult and you will need to rest now. It's okay to take a recharge day. I know that's a Monday, but take a recharge day. Uh, we'll have a void, of course, moon happening at 6.39, oh, sorry, 9.39 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, 6.39 p.m. if you're in Arizona like me. On the 28th, the uh, moon is going to, at 6.22 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that first quarter moon is going to enter into Cancer. While Mercury in Aries is conjunct Jupiter in Aries. So adjustments uh, made now will be the start of a long-term foundation. Okay, so that's very important. So take care internally. Like really focus on inside because whatever changes you make now, you got to live with them. Okay, you got to live with them long-term. Uh, there's going to be a lot of big ideas, so make sure you're focusing on the opportunities that you're passionate about, that you want to bring in. Don't make any changes that you might regret later, so think carefully. It's okay. It's okay to go over the plans in your mind many times. Scorpio, March 21st through the 28th. Scorpio, March 21st through the 28th. Scorpio, March 21st through Scorpio, March 21st through the 28th, okay. It's pretty particular. See how well you're seeing these cards. Now you've got stuff that's cut off. You can see the top of it. So that's the start. Scorpio, March 21st through. Scorpio, March 21st through the 28th. Now I will clarify all these cards and apparently fuss with them for a little while longer. But before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. Okay, so in your past here, Ten of Pentacles, you were interacting with somebody within a community and was most definitely you interacting with that is the death card, it is Scorpio energy. Ten of Wands here, you're feeling like there was some burden you needed to set down. King of Swords could have been interacting with any air sign. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Aquarius. Also, though, a card of Capricorn. Uh, looking for some equal reciprocity happening here with the Six of Pentacles in your near future. Ten of Cups, possibly within a family situation in and of itself. Sun card here, that's Leo energy. So you could have been interacting with a Leo. You did this, uh, someone, it's also a card of illumination or a card of happiness. We have to, you know, clarify to know for sure. Uh, you did this, someone, you're in the lover's energy. That's Gemini energy. It doesn't really matter. It's about choices, about a relationship. Oh, this is a general reading. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Also, 
uh, there's no gender in tarot. You're either walking up to somebody and talking, or someone is walking up to you and talking, and this whole reading is a conversation. So you're either choosing this person, or you're in, uh, either are or wanting to be in some sort of relationship with them. And again, re general reading, relationship is defined as a continued interaction between any two people. Okay, so it's you and anybody else in the world with any kind of relationship it could possibly be, because we're that general here. Okay, balance is found in the Six of Wands. So you two will have some sort of victory here, which is good. It's not indicating any kind of conflict. We like that. Uh, Queen of Cups, it's any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on the Cancer, also a card of Gemini. Likely is just your energy, though. Needing to use your intuition, needing to be emotionally balanced. Um, about your own happiness here with this Nine of Cups energy. Nine of Cups, Three of Wands, Five of Swords. They all clarify this Queen of Cups, okay? So you've got to be using your intuition about your own uh, happiness and looking towards the future here. Now, Five of Swords, that is conflict that's somebody creating conflict it's creating some sort of argument like this person's manifesting problems for uh, someone the way the summary has been going lately is one of these is you one of these is someone else and the other one is basically the new energy that is between you after this situation so we'll see how that plays out here i just kind of got this feeling that you know this is probably you and that's probably them what is this Ten of Pentacles in Scorpio's past. Bad health, okay? So it's an unhealthy community that you were in, or at least somebody in it was unhealthy. What is this Ten of Pentacles in Scorpio's past? High Priestess, this Cancer Energy. What is this Ten of Pentacles? Hangman, what is this Ten of Pentacles? That's Pisces Energy there. The Moon, that's also Pisces Energy. Okay, so someone within this community could be a Cancer, could be a Pisces. Uh, who was not feeling particularly well, to say, bad health, or they were acting toxic, or they were being moody in some weird-ass fashion that you didn't like, uh, left you feeling kind of in the dark. Maybe they didn't tell you they were sick. Hang man, you need a bigger perspective, a higher perspective. High Priestess, and to be, you had to use your intuition about this person, or they were indeed a Cancer, or maybe you just saw them as very mysterious with that High Priestess card. Or, or um, because it's a, they could be somebody that's highly intuitive, highly psychic, maybe they read tarot, maybe they, because the High Priestess energy is definitely going to do all those kinds of things as well. What is this Death card about in Scorpio's past? What were you on about here? Concern. Oh, you were worried. Okay. What is this death card about in Scorpio's past? Five of Cups. What is this death card about? <laughs> I used too many cards, but I'll show them to you anyway. The Lovers, which was your energy over there. The Four of Swords. The Magician. The Eight of Pentacles. What is this death card in Scorpio's past? In the Knight of Pentacles was this death card in Scorpio's past? Two of Cups. Okay. This is definitely a relationship of some kind, again, with the Cancer energy there with the Two of Cups. So you had some sort of concerns, and you were feeling a little sad. Knight of Pentacles, Ascendi, Earth Sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Virgo, also a card of Leo. So it could be somebody in any of those signs that you were interacting with. But you were worried. You were worried about the state of this relationship. Possibly you were worried about this person itself because they were in bad health up there. The person doesn't have to be sickly. But there could be something about them in and of itself that was concerning you. It could be something to do with their health, but it doesn't have to be. What is this Ten of Wands? It could be their energy that is ill, if you probably, if you follow me. Oh, Ten of Wands. You wanted to sit down a burden because of the potential of something. Uh, possibly because of the child. What is this Ten of Wands? Ace of Wands. What's this Ten of Wands? 
And these ones usually follow the Ten of Wands. Three of Swords, what's the Ten of Wands? Page of Cups. That's an indicator of a child. So there could be some sort of stressor here around a child. Three of Swords. This feels rather like you decided to sit down a burden because you got some communication in about this Three of Swords energy here. Now, Three of Swords is interference. It's outside interference from the relationship. It can mean cheating. It doesn't have to be. It can simply be, you know, uh, things like t you're overstressed from work or they're overstressed from work. The car broke down. The kids are sick. They, you know, and something outside of the ordinary that adds an additional stressor onto the relationship is what the three of swords really is now absolutely the, if you wanted to look at this in the negative you got a communication in somebody was cheating they had this passionate encounter and now they have a child okay it can certainly be interpreted that way but that's going to be very rare okay it's going to be more like these two are basically the same thing because the child card is also about untapped potential Okay. And the Ace of Wands is a new beginning. It's a fresh start. These are both indicators of new. You wanted, you were this Three of Swords came in, you found out about it, and you had this opportunity for a fresh start somewhere, and you can't have, this person can't hold any more wands. When you have the Ten of Wands, your arms are full. You got to put something down if you want this fresh start. What is this King of Swords about in Scorpio's present moment? My honor. Okay. Could be a boss or an employer. Maybe you're going to get a promotion of some kind. What is this King of Swords? Or maybe they are. What is this King of Swords in Scorpio's present moment? The Devil. This Capricorn energy. Which so is the King of Swords. What is this King of Swords in Scorpio's present moment? Death card. That's your own energy. What is this King of Swords in Scorpio's present moment? Ten of Swords, maybe some sort of betrayal or an ending of some kind. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, also a card of Capricorn. High honor is indicates some sort of promotion or raise. Uh, Devil card is Capricorn energy, so if you're interacting with an, a Capricorn, that's definitely what it is. Or it could be that maybe this race helps release a burden, helps get rid of some toxicity, and it's just an ending of some sort of toxic behavior. That's certainly going to be true for some of you. Um, it's possible that there is some sort of ending happening because of the high honor being offered to one of you or it could be that one of you feels betrayed by the toxicity and the high honor given to someone else like I said general reason reading take that as it resonates what is this six of pentacles about in Scorpio's near future mature woman okay what is the six of pentacles about Okay, we'll just take those. <laughs> the Emperor and the Empress. Page of Wands. That is definitely a match set for those two to just fall out like that. That's like weird. Because the Page of Wands is the one that I, I pulled. Those two fell out together. Well, the Empress would definitely be a mature woman. Now, the Empress is uh, this Libra Taurus energy, but it could also be any mother energy, and you know, and the Emperor is Aries energy, but it could also just be any father energy. They're every king and queen put together. There's going to be some sort of communication coming in, possibly from a couple. Okay, one of them being mature, offering you some kind of thing. Six of Pentacles, it could be anything. Right? It's going to be some sort of give and take. It's going to be something of importance. It could be a race if you follow, like that kind of thing. Uh, you could see yourself just purely as the mature woman, and you could be speaking to maybe a couple of people about wanting equal give and take, about something uh, not being in reciprocity and wanting it to be. Maybe you're doing more than your fair share 
possibly for your family here with this Ten of Cups. What is this Ten of Cups in Scorpio's near future? Uh, okay. What is this Ten of Cups? What is this Ten of Cups? What is this Ten of Cups? Uh, well, because this is the Kipper deck, somebody could literally be in prison, okay? Especially with the Justice card here and then the Three of Pentacles in reverse. If you have those kinds of problems, that's certainly what could be, be bringing about an end. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that you're in prison. It could mean that somebody in your family is going to prison, that King of Swords could totally be could totally be a judge, right? Or it could be the person who did the betraying and now they're going to jail. Okay, so, uh, Ten of Cups is definitely about uh, personal life, home and hearth kind of situation. It's your friends and your family. This is also Eight of Swords being up in your head, possibly about this balance that is needed. That is Libra energy there with the Justice card. Uh, this is, so the, Three of Pentacles upright. If you take a good look at what's on that card, you're going to see some Gothic or some Gothic revival architecture on there. You're going to see a tray foil. That's the shape up here that the Pentacles are in. And then you're even going to see yourself a Tudor Rose. So this is very much indicating it for itself that it's in England with the specific uh, markings. It's about commitment, it's about marriage. Right? These people could be getting married. That could be a baby blessing. This type of architecture wasn't just used everywhere. You're talking about churches and government buildings. Okay, It's in the reverse. So it indicates a lack of commitment. Because it, it does mean commitment of some kind. Knight of Wands is any fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Uh, heavy on the Sagittarius. It's also a card of Scorpio. This is also an inconsistent energy, and it could be that you're looking to balance out some sort of inconsistent energy because you're not getting the commitment you need, and that sort of makes you feel trapped in this family unit. Maybe you're not getting the right kind of help, right, from the people around you. And that's why this conversation about reciprocity, like why am I paying all the bills and doing all the chores too? What is this? You, uh, you know, we all live here. We all have to pitch in. Those kinds of conversations. What is the sun card amount in Scorpio's future? Courthouse. So some sort of illumination, possibly from a Libra. What is this uh, sun card about in Scorpio's future? Hmm? What is the sun card about? I find that very interesting. This person is looking out towards their future, three of wands. Uh, Queen of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Libra. Also, though, a card of Virgo. Knight of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Pisces, also a card of Aquarius. Courthouse is going to be very Libra energy. You're going to get some sort of illumination that might, you know, from this person. It might involve legal documents. The leaves you, I feel like this is you, Knight of Cups, looking out towards your future. Very heavy Libra energy here, also Leo energy though, for those who are following along like that. Um, so it could be a Libra, could be any of the air signs, again with that King of Swords over there, could be you know, same energy here. Definitely has you evaluating, you know, whatever their, their information is. They're evaluating something to do with your future. What is this lover's card about? Great fortune. Okay, so you have, to, you have a choice here. It's a, it's a fresh start kind of situation, Ace of Pentacles. What is this lover's card about? Two of Swords, what's this lover's card about? 
Queen of Pentacles. What's this lover's card about? The sun. Okay. So you are contemplating the choice presented by that person. Something is being illuminated for you about this blessing coming in. Two of Swords, Minor Arcana, Justice card. Okay, Libra energy again. But it's also a card of being indecisive. I really feel like this indicates that you're going to have some illumination going on there. Queen of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, half heavy on the Capricorn, also a card of Sagittarius. That had heavy Capricorn vibes on it with that devil card. So it could be that you're finding out more information from that person about whatever this legal situation is. Uh, this could also apply if, say this person works in law enforcement, whether that's the Justice Department, whether they're an actual judge or they're a cop, maybe there's somebody you know that works in those systems those, or wants to work in those systems, those could also apply. What is the Six of Wands in Scorpio's balance? Adjudication. What is the Six of Wands in Scorpio's balance? The Fool. What is the Six of Wands in Scorpio's balance? Nine of Cups. What is the Six of Wands? Six of Pentacles. Okay. So we're on this subject matter here. We're having this conversation this man and this woman looking in, you know, this mature woman looking for some sort of reciprocity happening here. And you're being very much, it's like balance is found in finding, focusing on your own happiness there with that nine of cups. But you're going to have some sort of risk you need to take here. There's a choice to make, adjudication. That's basically Scorpio energy in and of itself. It's your choice to make. Aries energy there with the fool. It's your choice to make. Do you want this leap of faith? Will this leap of faith make you happy? I mean, the six of wands kind of indicates it doesn't really matter which one of these you choose. You will have victory there. What is this uh, queen of cups? And Scorpio's outcome. Mature man. If you use your intuition what about this mature man. Mature man, mature woman. And it kind of, like, because you did get the king and the, the queen. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me be more specific. You did get the empress and the emperor. Okay? And looking for this with this communication. What is this queen of cups about in Scorpio's outcome? What's this queen of cups about? What's this queen of cups about? I'm telling you, the universe is so funny. This Queen of Cups, clarified by the Queen of Cups. Uh, really what it's indicating is you need to use your intuition about this mature man because the two of you are in some sort of conflict there, five of wands, and that leaves you standing at a crossroads. Not everybody can be happy in this uh, do you or don't you take this leap of faith energy. Five of Cups, I'm sorry, not Five of Cups, Five of Wands is, is uh, conflict. It's physical confrontation, it's arguments, it's gossip, it's politics, it's people not minding their own business. Gossip, office politics, and crap like that. So there's this definitely this conflict with this, uh, with this person, and you do need to be paying attention very closely to your intuition. Because it, you are at a crossroads and you need to figure out what to do. And it's telling you, focus on your own happiness is the first step. What is this Nine of Cups? Pathway. Your happiness will lead you to the right way, the right place. What is this Nine of Cups? Wheel of Fortune. What is this Nine of Cups? Temperance. What is this Nine of Cups? Ten of Pentacles. So we're back to the original. There was something not right about this community you were in. And you needed to use your higher perspective. Ten of Pentacles. So where 
are you on this pathway with this community? Now this pathway is very transformative. If you take a close look there, you see pretty little butterflies focusing on your own happiness. You know, they're kind of guiding you. There are signs happening. Uh, divine timing is at play. There's something uh, that will get brought into balance within your happiness. That's Sagittarius energy right there. Sagittarius energy is also what the Queen of Pentacles can be. In case that resonates for you. You might need to follow the Sagittarius. Uh, just, I'm kidding. That's all those Sagittarius Pisces energy there with the Wheel of Fortune. So you do this, this new pathway is what's going to lead you to happiness. So it's pretty specific there. Because, I mean, the Nine of Cups is down here in the balance, right? Happiness is part of your balance. What is this Three of Wands? Gift. Okay, so not happy with somebody's Ace of Pentacles. What's this Three of Wands? Page of Pentacles. What's this Three of Wands? King of Wands. What's this Page of Three of... Okay. So definitely communication going back and forth. King of Wands, any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Leo, also a card of Cancer. There's Cancer indications there in that Ten of Pentacles, but also very specifically, uh, the Emperor is Aries energy. This could be an Aries. Um, up there we have the Sun card. You have the Sun card here in your illumination. Those are Leo energies. This is Leo. This person could just be embodying this energy, too. You could be embodying this energy. There's some sort of communication coming in here, and it's going to spur on even more communication. An offer comes in with this gift, this pentacle coming in, okay? See this? Both, that's what it really is. And it leaves you standing at this crossroads. You're going to have a lot of communication with somebody about this offer. What is this Five of Swords in Scorpio's summary? Official person. Let's look at the Emperor card. It's gonna. Okay. And what is this Five of Swords? <laughs> what is this Five of Swords? Oh, that's the one, right? Yeah. What is this Five of Swords? The universe is funny today. Leo energy there again with that Strength card. The Five of Swords is clarified by the Five of Swords because we really mean it. Uh, yeah, so some kind of argument here, some sort of conflict, nightmare energy, a need to be strong when dealing with this uh, official person here. Just this whole back and forth, this whole argument that's happening, it is a nightmare, and it's a nightmare for them. This is their energy, this official person. It's like the Emperor card. It's them. They're having problems here. It's created a conflict. Your good blessing has created a conflict for them. That's unfortunate. You should still keep going towards your happiness. What is <laughs> advice for Scorpio March 21st through the 28th? Advice for Scorpio? Huh. Don't miss an opportunity here. Page of Pentacles. Then the Ace of Cups. That's Nope Energy. Four of Pentacles. Don't miss an opportunity because you're trying to hold on to someone. Or because someone's trying to hold on too tight for you. If an employer doesn't like the idea that you might move on for better things, better, more money, more everything else, then they should have treated you better when they had you. They should have paid you. They should be going all match. Let me see how I can meet you part way, give you some of those benefits. What do I got to do to make you stay? Right? And if they're not willing to do that, then they don't have any right to try to stop you from being happy. Nobody has the right to try to stop you from being happy. And if this move will make you happy, and it seems to be that this move is happening because happiness is your focus, nobody else should be like, you should be less happy so I can be more happy. That's not how it works. We're all supposed to be happy together. If you have a yes or no question that you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Message for Scorpio within the next few months. Message for Scorpio. Perfect timing. 
message for Scorpio. Wow, within the next few weeks. Okay, so you will get this notification of this within the next few weeks, and it might just be that this is the kind of plans that take a few months to get to. But very much so cautious, right, with that Four of Cups with the perfect timing. The time is, when it presents itself, the time for a yes is now. Like right when that moment happens, take it. Ask those questions, but seize that opportunity. Advice for Scorpio, March 21st through the 28th. You are good enough, full moon in Virgo. Advice for Scorpio. Prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus. Advice for Scorpio. Believe in the impossible, blue moon. I'm not mistaken. Let me check on something real quick for you here. Yeah? So April 20th. April 20th is the new moon in Taurus. So it's a time marker for you within the next few months. So that is approximately a month from when this reading starts. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Don't let your past hold you back, South Node. Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. It's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. Adjustments are required, third quarter moon. Most definitely, if an opportunity is coming in, adjustments will be required. Message for Scorpio. Fairy song. We fairies love music so, and music can heal and uplift you, human child. Play your favorite songs. Slip away from the quote unquote real world and enter a true world of magic. Well, I hope that helps, Scorpio, because it is what I have for you. And just remember as you go about the world this week that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here. <laughs>